My name's Rindy and welcome back to episode number 6 of the Defense Pier Saga. In this series we're going to be building one of the most beautiful and mega rare accounts I've ever gotten my hands on yet. I love building trophy accounts that serve almost zero purpose, but the build process itself is insane and intense, all leading to an end goal of me showcasing my achievements in ultimate fashion scape at the GE. So what's truly so insane and impressive about this account? Well, a lot of the progress you're seeing in these episodes has been fixed already, and it's going to be fixed as we go along because we're crossing the border of what's truly possible in this game, and some things maybe shouldn't be possible, therefore are getting fixed all of the time. A lot of the footage you'll see in today's episode, as well as previous episodes, has been changed already, and that makes this account, I believe, one of the most impressive and unique accounts I've ever set my hands on yet. If you've missed out on the last couple of episodes, we're basically shooting for 43 strength bonus in order to hit twos instead of ones with a poison weapon, so I can go ahead and kill the high level mobs inside of fight caves as quick as possible without having to waste extra supplies. The trick here is, getting 43 strength bonus is no easy task. On this very specific account build being a hardcore Iron Man defense peer with only one attack, one strength, and one prayer. But by using a lot of complex problem solving and pushing the borderline of possibility in this game, I believe we can achieve that strength bonus just barely, exactly at 43, after several years of work and effort, and that's what this series is all about. Once again, I hope you enjoy the journey in today's episode. So a lot of the progress in this series and even some of the progress you'll see in today's episode requires a lot of alts and me playing a lot of separate accounts at the same time. I'm basically running an unofficial RuneScape laboratory out of my apartment and I've been getting a lot of headaches as well. I always wondered what was causing these headaches until I looked up and realized there's thousands of blue rays emitting into my eyes. And I thought back to even my childhood when I was a normie playing on one singular monitor with one RuneScape client and I realized I had headaches then too. Maybe it was all due to this blue light because recently GMG sent me a pair of their blue light glasses, actually several pairs because they have a lot of different styles on their site. And after wearing these for just a singular day, I realized all of my headaches were completely gone. No joke. So I don't know about you, but I'm always looking at a screen, whether it's on my phone before bed, whether I'm watching a TV series, whether I'm even just running, I'm still looking at a screen then. Getting rid of this blue light in your life helps reduce eye strain, it improves your concentration, encourages your eye reflexes, maintains the quality of your vision over the long term, and preserves the quality of your sleep. So if you're an insane man like myself looking at a thousand screens or just a casual gamer with a headache, I believe these glasses are for you. They really help me out and I think they'll help you as well. Go check out this offer today. In the next 48 hours, there will be 40 percent off GMG's blue light glasses using my link in the description below. All right, just a quick series recap to see where we're at now. We've got one prayer priest and pearl, which is going to let us get some defense bonus down the road. We've got a few impossible quests that otherwise shouldn't be done on this account from that priest and pearl completion with one prayer. Since our new ethical account creation, we've also found a new way to make recoils, and I've made over a thousand of those thus far, and I plan to make a few more in this episode. And those have actually been used to complete even more supposedly impossible quests for this account build that otherwise the NPCs in these quests could not be killed with anything other than those recoils. We're currently hunting down medium clues with very limited stats and very limited navigation. That's why we've been hunting as many orthodox and unorthodox navigation routes as possible. More recently I've unlocked balloon transport and now I need to get my fire making up in order to use that transport. Last episode after completing Twilight a Trio and killing thousands of hobgoblins for an iron spear, we finally got that iron KP spear and that's going to be our best in slot poison weapon until we literally get a DFS and bone dagger poisoned way down the road. So far for medium clues we're looking for spiked manacles and purple sweets for the fight caves. I've already gotten a strength ammo trimmed which is my best in slot amulet and I've already gotten black gloves which are my best in slot gloves. So yes today we're looking at more medium clues, we're looking at more possible navigation routes, I've also got some skilling goals in the mix and this time we're going to be completing some quests in a very strange and never seen before way just as a completionist level goal. Because not only do I want a fire cape on this account but I want to do possibly everything I can do on this very weird account build. Oh yeah, and lastly, I need to catch probably another 6,000 lucky implings for that permanent kilt for one strength bonus. Alright, here we are right where we left off. Right now I'm working on a 60 fire making and 60 wood cutting grind. I'm going to be doing that because I need it for balloon transport systems since I just recently completed the enlightened journey quest to use these. These balloon transports are going to be amazing. They can get me across the game for these clue scroll steps way faster than anything I have right now. And if I was only needing this transport on any other account, I could stop at 60 fire making and not even work on the wood cutting level. That means at 50 fire making I could even go just straight to winter top. But I want 60 wood cutting because I actually need U logs to use the transport sort system and I even need magic logs to get to the gnome stronghold which I might get 75 wood cutting later down the road for that but currently I'm going to be just trying to get some magic logs through nature implings and work on the very long term goal of 75 wood cutting in the distant future. Okay you all know I'm about efficiency, not really, but 
but I have been looking into these crop circles and skilling around them, and I've been trying to figure out the most efficient crop circle to stay around and be able to woodcut these willow logs while training my fire making and woodcutting at the same time at these early levels. And it looks like that's going to be this one here in Remington over there to the northeast. So I have another account in the same world scouting that area just in case a ninja or a magpie or anything that can give me GP out of an impling jar pops up. I can go ahead and run into that crop circle for the next 15 minutes until that crop circle changes locations in this world. And then I'll hop to another world and try to find another world inside of the Remington area with Piro Piro crop circles available. Okay, so I used this earlier. I already got one ninja ampling jar from this, but I forgot to record the clip. Luckily, I just found a magpie, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the crop circle now on this account and try to catch it as soon as I possibly can. Let's hope this crop circle doesn't disappear like the last tick while I try to run into it. We're gonna go ahead and head over to the magpie impling. Luckily as well, pushing through the wheat actually after entering one of these crop circles versus using the one in Zanaris is going to allow us to push through the wheat faster, meaning if there's any Vinny scouts around or anything like that, we can get to the imp a little bit faster. That was about two times the rate of pushing through the wheat as it normally was. And right now I'm using my dark lure alt over there to lure that magpie as close as possible. And yeah, I'm gonna catch this hopefully, unless someone just logs in right next to it. Okay, I should have it. Okay, there we go. Now I got the magpie. You guys might think this is not worth it at all. It's just a magpie jar, it's just a ninja jar, but I'm actually discovering these quite quickly and I'm just basically trying to force spawn them on the alt account by catching the lower tier ones like the nature implants while doing wood cutting at the same time. And this just means I won't have to go to LMS as much for GP. I'm gonna get all these alkables, not only from the medium clues, but from these impling jars as well, all while training these early wood cutting and fire making levels. All right, so already from about 20 to 25 minutes of woodcutting and fire making, here we go. We've gotten a lot of jars and that's probably a solid like 60 to 80K worth of GP, just passive income. But we've came across a problem. I can't find another crop circle in Remington. I've gone through like 50 worlds and this is making me think that a lot of people who have been telling me that the crop circles are purely random are completely wrong. It reminds me of the last episode where I explained the impling situation and how they spawn at different times in different worlds, and maybe these crop circles are on a very specific cycle. I don't know, I'm gonna look into this real quick and figure this out. So I've hopped on the alt account and there's an impling right outside of the Zanaris wheat field spawn that I can actually look at where the current crop circle is located. And unlike the wiki saying this is on a random timer and not any kind of set schedule thing, I've realized it's not completely random. It seems like these are all spawning in a very specific order, no matter the world. Some worlds are a little bit behind, a little bit ahead, but it's just like the impling spawns I talked about last episode. Some of these worlds have just experienced more server lags than the others. And that's why I could hop to Remington on a world that's been lagging more and the circle would still be there versus a world that's lagged less. The wiki also stated that there was 30 minutes around the time that these crop circles spawned before they moved locations. But on further testing, I found out this was only 15 minutes before they moved to a new possible location. The greatest find of all of this was that the locations were set in stone. There was no randomness at all. It went from this direction exactly. The Grand Exchange, to the Farming Guild, to Hasidius, to Harmony Island, to Prif, to Catherby, to Gnome Stronghold, to Broomhaven, to Mossley Harmless, to Taverly, to Lumbridge Windmill, to Artie, to Champions Guild, to Miscellanea, to Doric's House, to Yanil, to Draenor, and then to Remington. And then the cycle repeats yet again. These are all changed locations every 15 minutes. That means they'll be set on an exact time of the server clock. And how will we know what the server clock time is if the worlds tend to lag? Once again, by using the Shazian Gangster Board. When that Gangster Board hits 20 minutes on an alt account, that is when we'll know exactly in the server when the crop circle changes to its new location per 15 minutes. So why did I just show you all a 600% sped up clip of me running from the Artie Cloak Teleport to Grand Tree? Well, because that's my quickest route here. And once again, that's the reason we need to be able to get this balloon transport, these magic logs, and 60 fire making, because currently it just takes way too long to get here. I could have missed that dragon impling, and even this second one right here, that I'll explain someday, 
to you all how I knew where these were. We're still trying to get glories because I want to wear one for some accuracy. For some NPCs, it's going to be better to wear this over the strength enemy because we cannot yet hit twos. Also, I'm trying to get that mounted glory still on my wall inside my POH for some great teleport access. All right, we've gotten a dragon longsword and let's see what else. Dragon stones, not a glory. But that is some good GP, I'll take it, it was worth the run. Okay, I've moved willow chopping locations, I've moved skilling locations, because currently there is no crop circle as we found out at Remington. This thing runs on a timer, it could be six hours before it comes back to Remington, and there's no good trees around any of the crop circles I know of right now. So here we are, we're next to a shortcut to bring us back to the Lumbridge Swamp to run in through Piro Piro through Zanaris, using our trusted Draymond staff here. And I have an alt account still at Piro Piro, chasing down imps. Possibly I can get to them fast enough before a Vinny can. I don't know, probably not, but it's worth a shot. Also, I noticed something weird here. I'm using my admin tools, line of sight tools here, and there's like a 10 tile distance if I move one more west here to the dock of Zanaris. So unless there's like an invisible wall or something right there, which it doesn't look like it because I have line of sight, you could probably telegrab something onto the island, uh, but don't do that because all right, after a while, we, 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 we've gotten Impling scouted. Let's see if we can get there in time all the way from this fucked up Willow spot. The problem is getting back here is going to be a bitch, so I don't even know if this is worth it, but I just wanted to test it out. We're going to go upstairs, talk to this guy, and piss him off, and he's going to kick us all the way to Lumbridge Swamp. If you guys didn't know about this, it's a weird old game mechanic, and yeah, it works. There we go. We've been kicked back to Lumbridge Swamp, and now I just have to run into the little hut here with my Draymond staff on, and then run as fast as I can east once inside Zanaris to get to Piro Piro. It's still a longer drive, obviously, than me just running from that Remington spot before into the crop circle, but it's our only option right now, and we need this ninja impling. There's a ninja impling on the other side of this wheat, and I'll be damned if I don't get it right now. Holy shit, I'm literally moving through this wheat at snail speed compared to what I was before with that boost from entering through the weird crop circle. But we've got to hop worlds over to this. I think there's some people around, so I'm trying to dark lure it away from them on my alt while hopping right now. Hopefully I can still get this and it's worth the clip. This is going to look cool. Oh my god, there's purple man right there. No, he's too slow though. We got it. Yes, there's two people right here. What the fuck? This is amazing. We still got the ninja impling. Now we just gotta go all the way back to that willow. All right, I'm gonna take this quiz master. I've been told by my nerdy friends who actually play this game normally that I should always take this random on an Iron Man and take the mystery box. So this is the second quiz master on the account. I think the best thing I can get from the mystery box right now for my account is a stale baguette just for fashionscape or a D med, which would be my best in slot defense bonus. If I pull that, there's no way I am going to pull that, but that'd be pretty cool to have. Oh my god, what the fuck? I called it. I got a fucking dragon med help. I said like the best thing I could get is a fucking dragon med or a stale baguette and I rolled a fucking 1 in 1.9k drop out of a fucking mystery box. What the actual fuck? Okay, well there goes all my RNG. We've been here a while. I don't even know why I'm still cutting willows. I don't even know if this is the best thing to do at this level. Probably not. But we're 51 wood cutting, 53 fire making. I'm gonna look into teak soon. I think there's one in the Isle of Souls that someone just told me about, but unfortunately it's new content and it's in the back of this place in the middle of fucking nowhere. So we're gonna have to run all the way to this thing. All right, I actually waited a bit to uh, run all the way here because I just didn't want to make the journey of running around an entire useless island. But here we are at 57 wood cutting, 59 fire making. We've almost got our fire making goal. We've almost got our wood cutting goal too. We're getting there. I'm having to take a break. I'm gonna have to run all the way back here, but this is important. It's a lucky impling. Once again, the Twy Boy on a trio teleport is amazing. It's gonna take us right over to where this thing is spawning, as well as to some medium clue steps later, I believe. I'm so glad I completed that quest last episode. The transportation just from this scroll has been so helpful thus far. Well, I thought this was gonna be a lucky impling, but it's actually a dragon impling. Why not? I might as well try my hand at a glory again. Or I mean, fail my hand at a glory again. Instead, we got a dragon longsword, but I'll take it. It's good GP. It was kind of worth the run. Or, I don't know, I still have to run back. So, that's what I mean. 
I'm not looking forward to that part. All right, I actually missed it, but I did get 60 fire making, 60 wood cutting, and now we're here. The storage facility for the balloons only holds 100 of each, but I'm gonna need the balloon a lot of times, so I'm once again collecting as many of every type of log I can, and collecting these from upstairs in Lumbridge is faster than chopping them down manually, so that's what I'm doing for the normal logs here. So while chopping teaks earlier, I did get a clue out of a bird's nest, and it's an easy one. Not bad for an easy clue, I guess. That's to be expected random junk you guys like confirmed with me that this is the best place to choke oak log to choke to chop oak logs near a bank not to choke on them so i'm chopping oak logs here i'm getting maybe 200 300 of these banking them and then i'll move over to willow logs just right around the corner which are also close to a bank all right so i've got 300 of oak normal and willow now i need use but first i'm gonna get host favor because i want to get into the woodcutting guild for increased chance at use. I also just wanna go for 100% favor instead of the 60% I believe that's required for the woodcutting guild because then I can also use the tithe farm minigame teleport which is super close to a lot of medium clue locations that I'll need for the medium clue grind for manacles. Also, not only does the woodcutting guild give increased U logs, it's going to give me the possibility to buy a ruin axe finally rather than use the shitty Addy axe I've been using this entire time. Guess what? I am 100% Hosidious favor. Okay, so to use the minigame teleport here, I gotta actually play the minigame at least one time. So I gotta enter this guy's farm. Uh, yes, I know what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing, but we'll find out one day through a Theoatrix guide, of course. All right, moment of truth. We've spent all this time just for a little minigame teleport. Let's see if it actually works. I was running earlier, so that's why it didn't work. Okay, now it's working. Yes, we got this. And now we have easy access to Hosidious area at least every 15 minutes or is it 20 i can't even remember the timer on the minigame teleport somebody help me what a breath of fresh air i've bought my ruin axe i'm now in the woodcutting guild with all the other g's here i'm gonna try something can i two tick woodcut a yew tree can i lure these foresters over next to each other off tick them and have them attack me so i can auto retaliate them highly doubt it yeah okay that one's already out of my aggression zone the other one's all the way over there. There's probably no way you can use the foresters, even though they do have a four tick attack speed here. If you guys didn't know, two ticking a tree requires a multi area. So we found another multi area and it requires two NPCs at four tick attack cycles. These NPCs attack you every two ticks, alternating each while you have auto retaliate on and a bow with no ammo. This makes it basically to where you just chop trees like much, much quicker than you normally do. And I need you trees and this isn't working. We have one guard in the aggression zone here in this multi spot, but the other one, I take one step closer to the U tree and he de-aggresses. I don't think we're gonna be able to pull this off. If anyone has any more ideas, I'm probably never gonna try this again in my life, but if anyone has an idea on how to two tick a U tree, specifically two tick one, let me know in the comments below. I don't know, it's a cool thought. I thought all hope was lost here in my possibility of two ticking a U tree, but here's a U tree and here's an impling that just vanished. Fuck! This might be possible if we can get the impling to stay aggressed to me and it's it, it like de-aggresses after one tile though. Yeah, I don't know. The forester and the impling are so close. I had that opportunity, but it teleported away. Maybe if there's a way to like force teleport an impling to some direction and then uh, right, stand right next to that forester and that yew tree and off take them and get two tick cycles and then get the yew logs, but uh, God, that's not even worth it. So I decided I'm just going to be a filthy casual and chop yew logs like any other normal human being playing RuneScape. I've got my fashion scape on, I've got my swag on, I've got some medium clues unlocked, got my strength enemy trimmed, my adamant heraldic, my elf boots. All right, so I've got around 200 of each log, finally. And now we're completing the little area unlocks to unlock every transport on the balloons, which is that little puzzle there. And I had to use Wiki to do that, obviously, but it was not that hard. Got a little bit of fire making XP off that as well, which is kind of nice. So we're storing all our logs. We're in this for the long haul. I believe we're probably gonna have to do a lot more medium clues unless I just get spooned. I think these should last us because I don't always use the balloon transport, but I will be using it for a lot of clue steps along the way of me trying to get manacles. The only problem is Gnome Stronghold, the place I wanna get to the most, I only have six magic logs in the actual storage and that's all just from nature implants Hopefully I'll get some more. So very quick here, a break from all things transportation. I'm going on that last run to enchant my last 1000 recoils and 100 games necklaces. And hopefully that's all I need for the rest of this account. All right, here we go. Another 15 hours later, everything is enchanted. I believe we only have one dark crab teleport left to spare. So hopefully no more LMS until I get a swift blade possibly. I might need that someday, but no more LMS for a very long time. Instead now, 
we're just getting our money passively. We don't need Dark Crab teleports anymore. And as you can see, damn, 2,004 recoils. And I believe we have around 200 games necklaces as well. I might use every single one of those. I have some plans for those. I'm going to not release now, but you'll see in the future why I need so many of these recoils. And if you want to learn, you know, how I got those further, I believe a few clips or episodes back by now, if it still even works, that's where you're going to find out how I got these enchanted at only one magic and ended up staying one magic. But like I said, it was a long process, 30 hours total around to enchant that entire 2,000 recoils. So recently you've probably seen me do an unorthodox method to try and get transportation to Relica through Larry from the Cold War quest by using him to the iceberg, then using him again back to Relica. But we found out last episode that doesn't work. So instead of leaving this quest yellow and never using that transportation method since it doesn't even work, I've decided I'm gonna complete it. For the quest points, for the completionist journey, just because I can do it. And I can do it without 40 attack XP. Normally there's a little glitch at the end of this quest that grants 40 attack XP just because of the way the quest was coded and how old it is. And I really don't want 40 attack XP, I want 0 attack XP. So myself and Mahler worked out a way to actually do this quest with 0 attack XP. And I'm gonna go ahead and display that now and show you exactly how we're gonna complete this quest along with nulling the attack XP that's a glitch and should not be there in the first place. Just keep that in mind. Alright, so here's the plan. We've got an alt here, and then we've got four other alts on another computer, and we're in world 580, the LMS world. So what we're going to do, continue on to this quest, and it's going to put us in the war room where we normally have to kill the ice demons, and one of these ice demons will grant 40 attack XP. But like I said, I don't want that attack XP. That's ugly. I don't want that shit on this account. What I'm going to do is I'm going to poison the singular ice demon I have to kill that gives 40 attack XP. I'm going to then aggro it on a splash alt I have lined up here in the in the bottom corner of the screen. And then by aggroing it, I'm going to keep the poison on the NPC. See, if I just teleported out, the poison would vanish. You have to have the poison aggroed on an alt here. So I've got an alt with splash gear. I'm gonna steal the NPC I poison with the alt, and then I'm gonna make my way as fast as I can the last man standing before that thing dies to poison. I have to kill this exact specific NPC here or else the attack XP won't drop. Okay, after literally 10 minutes, I poisoned this thing, so now I'm going to take the aggression on the splash alt here by splashing it, obviously. And then once it's off me and I make sure it's still poison, I'm then going to chronicle out of here and head to last man standing as fast as possible. And while at last man standing, I'm going to try and get a casual match on my four other alt accounts. Therefore, being in LMS exactly when this thing dies to the poison, and because I hit a 1 on it already, that means it's going to be my kill credit. Okay, so I just got to be fast and get to LMS before this thing dies, because LMS has fake XP drops, and that's where the XP drop is going to happen. So as long as I get there, as long as no one else is in the lobby, I should be good. So yeah, this is literally a race against time, and I am sweating. Um, I guess I can log out, I believe, as a failsafe in case this thing does end up getting poison timer down way too quickly and I don't get inside LMS in time. I can just click the log out before it dies to poison. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not totally sure that it'll null the XP, but I hope it will. So this is all, kind of, I've never done this before. I probably should have ran this on a test run, but fuck that. Who's got time for that? It's, it's all balls to the wall from here, baby. Let's join the casual game now on my other alts and get this thing going. Okay, future Rendy speaking here. At this point, I am really sweating because there is some guy standing up in the casual lobby match who won't leave. I don't know why anyone plays casual mode in LMS. There's literally no point. There's no gain. There's no point gain. I don't know. It was like a random Vinny or something. But I was like, fuck it. We're going to go in and do this. And yeah, here we go. Let's do it. Okay, the guy is actually out of the, the lobby right now somehow. Oh no, he's back. What is he doing? Don't come in here. No, 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 no. And another guy hops in. Okay, he's gone. So there's one. No, wait, what is that guy doing? 
Why are people joining the casual lobby? There's two randoms. Okay, they're, they're like going in and out. I think they're maybe trying to remove their skull with some glitch or something. Fucking bug abusers, I know. We got 30 seconds left. There's only, it seems like there's only one person here. He looks like a Vinny. If I can possibly run away from him and not spawn next to him, everything should be good. Even if he attacks me, I, I think I could pull this off. The, the poison is going down very fast here, so there's no backing out now. It's now or never. We're gonna get this thing done. I'm gonna eat as much as I possibly can, safe up the full, put all my protection prayers on and my tank gear. Please don't attack me. Please don't attack me. All right, I'm going to run for my life here, away from the crowd. I think he is right there. My other accounts are right here as well, but I am running away from them. Hopefully he attacks one of them. Okay, I hear him attacking one of my other accounts. I think we're good. This thing literally has like one or two ticks of poison damage left and he's dead. So there it goes, it died. Okay, 40 attack XP, nulled XP drop right there, and I believe in the quest journal that step of the quest is now done. All I have to do now is talk to Larry, but first, this Vinny, or whoever the fuck this guy is hanging out in casual, he's pissing me off. I'm gonna go kill him real quick. My man's coming for the DDS, oh my god, no, I just have to back up. Okay, yeah, I think he's out, I think we're good. I even got to kill this guy and show him who's boss. Sit, sit buddy. And that's how you do it, folks. That's how you win a casual game of LMS and complete Cold War if you're a super fucked up account like myself. Okay, it seems like it worked. The restrictions on this account are abysmal, but this is what I love about this game and this build. I'm able to do the most fucked up process in order to complete the simplest quest just to negate 40 attack XP. I logged on four alts plus another one that splashed in order to get into a casual match and negate that 40 attack XP. Less than a handful of these accounts in the game, zero attack XP, Cold War quest completed. Success! All right, we're back on the eclectic grind. And like I said, I love having this dark lure alt next to me. I've caught a few rare amplings, including this dragon one right here. We'll see what that has inside later. Speaking of rare amplings from my last clip, I just caught a lucky ampling, as you see in my inventory, in the same inventory as the dragon one. Um, I'm getting super lucky. I've never had one of those yet in Piro Piro that I've found myself, so that's awesome to see. The Lucky gave pretty much junk. The Dragon gave me Dragon Dart tips, so nothing great. Right now, I'm opening some Magpies I've gotten from a collection of around 900 Eclectics that I have banked now. So like I said, we have about 900 Eclectics banked. I think this is going to get me 23, 24, 25 medium clues done. Like I said, I'm having to drop about 50% of these. So I started with a thousand eclectics the first time and as I open jars, they slowly break. So this time it's only 900 eclectics and sooner or later, I'm going to have to collect more jars by catching more lower tier implants and exchanging those for the jars. So very first casket from our 900 eclectic haul and we got purple sweets. I'm going to take that because I need those for Jad. Now a while ago, I kind of made a vast overestimation of needing 10,000 purple sweets, but I think I'm only going to need three to 5,000 to complete the fight cave. All right, second casket and more purple sweets. Awesome. Just what I need, honestly. So I've just got a medium clue step I've never had yet. I have to go inside the lighthouse and luckily I think I can do this mid quest because I can't complete horror from the deep quest. The quest gives ranged XP, it gives strength XP, and neither of those I can get obviously because I'm one range and strength. But this means I am going to have to do bar crawl I think to get the lighthouse key to get inside the barbarian agility area where the guy gives you the key. So that's a little bit unfortunate and a little bit of a detour just for a singular step of a medium clue. I mentioned before that guard dogs were the worst NPC to kill inside of the medium clue steps, but I was wrong. These market guards are the worst thing to kill. I have 6 HP right now. This thing max hits a 6, so it could literally kill my account. I eventually had to flinch this and not mess up at all, but we finally got the poison off, even though it ran through our entire inventory of food. Future Rindy here speaking, but I wanted to go over this crazy idea I had for amazing transportation for clues later on. I realized this while I was going to Ferox Enclave for the first time using the canoe system with my newly upgraded woodcutting skill. I had this amazing idea for transportation. Inside of Ferox Enclave here, there is a pool that restores your run energy and your health. And once I'm 99 defense, I get unlimited ring of life teleports per day. If I set my spawn point to the Ferox Enclave for 5 million GP eventually, I can then use Rock Cake to activate that ring of life constantly and bring me back to the Ferox Enclave, where I can then access the teleport to Castle Wars, use this enlightened journey basket over here for other teleports and other navigation, as well as even use the pool to restore everything and use the bank right next door inside the Ferox Enclave. If I ever get 99 defense one day, which I will eventually, probably in about a year, then I would be able to use this for a much quicker purple sweet grind. And that's something definitely to look forward to as a potential teleport that has many uses. So I was gonna take the canoe to Ferox Enclave to Castle Wars for the last bar crawl step here, all the way in Yanil, 
but unfortunately, I've been drinking so many beers, my woodcutting is below the 57 requirement to cut the Waka canoe that takes me to Ferox Enclave. I never thought I'd see something as dumb as this happen, but literally I cannot get to Ferox Enclave because my woodcutting level is drained from the bar crawl, meaning I'm literally too drunk to paddle a canoe. I was about to finish the bar crawl, but something more important popped up. Someone pinged me about a lucky impling. And here it is. Hopefully it actually gives us the kill. Probably not because that's like a 1 in 6250 chance, but who knows. Alright, let's see. What do you have for me? A rune full helm. Not bad, but uh, definitely not what I wanted and not really a unique. Alright, we finished the bar crawl, so I'm going to go in and out of here just to make sure it's done. Sweet. I can now get the lighthouse key and do that part of the quest in order to finally do this medium clue step. Alright, let's see. I've got the key. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I should help. I just helped. Oh my god, you gotta repair the bridge as well just to get inside the lighthouse. That doesn't make any sense. I have the key. Okay, I wasted another game's necklace charge. I went and got planks and I had to go buy more nails. We finally fixed the bridge. So let's see if we can do this clue step. Now I have a suspect feeling that it might not be possible because I think this is instanced. Yeah, as you can see, the scenery changes here. This is the instanced version while you're doing this during the quest, but I don't know, it might be possible. If you saw my old path video, you saw that objects now work the same as in instances, so they avoid other complications like invalid teleports, and there we go, it did work. Even though the actual clue step helper didn't tell me to search there, the instanced object acts the same as the one in the main game, thankfully, due to that patch a few years back, and it looks like we're able to finally complete this step. This is it. Is this the Manacle Destiny? No. Nope. It's just some shitty ass Addy equipment, as always. Alright, so to do this Shazian step, I can finally use the minecart system I unlocked last episode. And I used the Rat Pits Teleport to Port Serum to get to the dock as quick as possible. Whoa, what the fuck is going on here? This is like the real world trade gang right here. Untrimmed cooking cape, untrimmed fletching cape, bot cape out of the GE. Alright, this is my last casket of the night. Let's see what we get. Something good, hopefully. Ah, more adamant equipment. Every single thing I cannot wield. I can't wield the bow, can't wield the sword, can't wield the dagger. Love it. Actually, before I got off for the night, I wanted to test one more thing. I have one singular crystal key in the bank from magpies. Let's see if I can get the Addy Square Shield for that medium clue step that requires Addy Square Shield. One in 64 chance. But no, I got a spinach roll again. Awesome. Okay, it is the next day. Let's see. New casket of the day. Gold Elegant Legs. I do like my gold. That's like a, actually, I think a double drop rate. Like it's a one in 2000 something instead of like the manacles, which is one in 1100. So nice. Uh, that's not even a gold though. Look, that's like a piss yellow. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe we'll get the top sometime soon and match that at least, even though it's not even a real gold. I've got Rune Light admin tools on right now to show me null IDs. And it's handy because if you ever come across something that's in the two minute spawn timer that I talked about last time, like these implings, and this once again is the rare impling ID 9389. There we go. It's a dragon impling. So I knew it would be a rare impling. So I stuck around for just like 30 seconds. It popped up. And if I can catch this damn thing, we'll have a free dragon impling on our route to the River Lum clue step which is literally like right next door. That's actually probably the rarest implant I've caught so far on clue steps, not a glory, of course. Yeah, I've, I've came across a lot of magpies and ninja implants just running routes this terrible way I have to with no teleports. I just wanted to show you how fucking amazing these enlightened journey baskets are for transportation for my account. I don't have to already cloak teleport this time. I can literally just float across the sky and we're here in the gnome stronghold. There are so many clue steps in this area, it's not even funny. But we also have a problem because I only have like four logs left from nature implings. I expected to get more, but they're very rare to pull from these implings. And I don't yet have the woodcutting level to chop more magic trees. All right, another reward casket and absolutely nothing casket 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 10 purple sweets i'll take it i was in the taverly area doing a clue step and i figured i'd use our unorthodox teleport here again to get to another clue step thank you dark wizard man for putting me into the lumberage swamp yeah let's just make this place uh farthest away from any means of transportation from any bank from anything that's a great idea and let's just add random curves around so you have to walk around in circles before you get here Ah, oh, holy blessing, and a Lunar Isle teleport. Just what I need, I can definitely use both of these things. Lunar Isle teleport. Maybe if we're lucky, this has been oversighted. Nope. Gotta complete Lunar Diplomacy. 
That's unfortunate. Let's just throw it in here anyways. All right, what is it? What are we getting? More sweets, I'll take it. That's actually really good. I'm getting a lot of sweets on this run right now. All right, look at the top left of my screen. We got a Karambwin spot clue for the first time ever. My, my little, little friend, friend told me about a secret that you can do partial completion of Grand Tree Quest and you can use the charters to the shipyard. So if this is true, possibly it's gonna be a really good route to take every time I have a clue step like this one because it's right next door to this. As you can see, here's the clue step. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it done right here. It's so close to that shipyard, so I really hope this works. We'll find out. So I've gotten to the final step of this quest. I noticed earlier that you could take the glider upstairs that one time you had to run away from the Grand Tree and it would take you to the crash site in Karamja. Honestly, I maybe should have left it at that step if I could repeat that gnome glider, which I think you can. So I, I maybe shouldn't have done to the last step of the quest, but let's just hope the person was right I was talking to about the shipyard charter because if not, we just made a big no-no and we can no longer use that glider to the crash site in Karamja every time we get into this gnome stronghold. Haven't made my way to a charter ship yet, but another bad casket. All right, moment of truth. Was this person right? Does it show up? No, it does not show up. There's no shipyard transport and I've done as many steps of the Grand Tree as I can do, so I think that's uh, that's a fail. I should have left it at the glider portion of the quest. I don't think I can even reuse the glider now, so... Damn. I still need to find a better way to Fremenic land. If anyone, oh god, that's terrible. If anyone has any ideas, please send me a comment. Give me a suggestion. I need some better transportation to, what is this place called? Relica. That's it. Once again, I'm using the Twibo and a Trio teleport scroll from Clue Scrolls I've gathered. That's because I've finally done the quest last episode. There's a clue step right over here. There's a lot of clue steps all around here, and it's just southeast of where I came in from, so... This is super handy. Once again, I'm going to be really disappointed once I run out of these things. Once again, having to run around the entire RuneScape world map does have its perks, but it doesn't give a glory always. We got a bucket helmet. I've always wanted one of these bad boys. I can actually wield these. Once again, another reason why I chose the defense pier. I can wield a lot of cool shit and walk around in it. Look at that. Okay, I swear to God, this is the last time I'm going to talk about it. But the Twiboy on a trio teleport is so handy look at this clue step bam right next to the teleport I'm so glad i can use this thing all right i mentioned this before but all good things must come to an end one magic log left our last grand tree trip with the balloon transport we're gonna have to run from the arty cloak spot again here soon oh my god more cool clues once again, I got the cursed clue step of the Addy Square Shield. I have no more crystal keys in the bank, so this one's going on the floor. It looks a lot of the time like these clue steps. These rewards are no big deal, but on average, each of these clues takes between 35 and 45 minutes to complete because I have to drop so many once again. I have to run around everywhere. I have to catch many eclectic emplines. I have to get jars for the eclectic emplines. The process is a very long one. My favorite, more adamant weapons that I'll never be able to use. Okay, that looks like shit, but honestly, that's some good GP profit. I'm going to sell to a shop later, so I'll take it. More sweets? Can't ever complain about that. 12 sweets, that's a bunch. This will be the 19th clue of the batch and the last one. Let's see what it gives us here. Not bad. Some nice alkables. So in that 900 batch of eclectic gameplays, I was able to complete 19 medium clues. So if I was a normal account, I believe on average I would have been able to complete 36. So it's just a little bit more than 50% of the clues I can do compared to that of a normal account, you may say. Hey, future Randy here speaking again. Do you remember these clips? Yeah, this was a while ago. When I was talking about my passion for the game coming back and me really being on my grind again, I was talking about this account, not the Iron Man from Hell. Honestly, I love playing this account. The Iron Man from Hell, it's, it's aight. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but that's why you're not seeing many of those episodes right now. Now, I might take a break in the future from this account and maybe do a little bit more work on that account, but uh, that'll probably be in the distant future. That series is on pause right now for all of those who are asking. I'm just really enjoying myself more on this account. And now we're finally caught up to, uh, yeah, this video. But ironically enough, yeah, after recording this video, I took a two month break from this account and just kicked monks basically while training the Iron Man from Hell and releasing videos on that. So the next clip you're gonna be seeing in this video today is still old, but it's two months later. We're still, you know, kind of back in time. We're slowly getting up to the current day, probably in the next two or three episodes, we'll be up to par with my live status of the account. I might always keep it a little bit behind just for security reasons, but yeah, 
So that's what we're doing right now. And that's why as well, for those who have asked me, the Ring of Elements, it's a great transportation option. I'll get into that later this episode actually, but I do not have it yet because it has not been released yet. The mini game has not came out yet. This is currently old footage, but thank you for all the tips guys. Hope you're enjoying the video thus far. All right, so here we are for the first time in a couple of months. As you can see, I've got 80 defense now from 74. Yes, it took that long, just AFKing, kicking monks while working on my other account on the side. This is gonna be good because we're getting closer to 85 defense and that's gonna put us at 40 combat, meaning we could do Vanica tasks for better Slayer points, possibly get Slayer rings for transportation. We could even possibly do Soul Wars at 40 combat, making our XP rates for defense and HP go way, way up compared to the 2K per hour I'm getting at Monks right now. So the first thing I wanted to do back on this account is get 40% Shazian favor so I can possibly do Gangsters for a little bit more defense XP if I'm gonna be going for that 85 defense goal but I've noticed here for some reason I have not gotten favor in Shazian in a very long time now there's only one wounded soldier per house and you gotta like cycle through them this way which is incredibly stupid like I said they keep adding unnecessary buildings and objects in this entire continent before you could literally heal all these guys go up and down the stairs and bam you could get probably favor twice as fast as you can now with these bandages all right there we go it took about 40 minutes but we have 40 percent Shazian favor now and we can try out gangsters in the future I'm probably not gonna try them right away but I just wanted to get that favor out of the way I'm realizing as well the only favor I don't have at this point is Piscarillus. Is that how you say it? Piscarillus? The port town, whatever the fuck it is, the fishing colony. That's the one I don't have. So we're picking up planks now and I'm banking them because I, I used my 20% favor lamp on something else. I can't even remember what. So I'm actually going to have to get 1 to 20% favor in Piscalaria's house the hard way by repairing cranes with planks and nails. I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Okay, so yeah, we're repairing cranes with iron nails because that's all the shopkeepers sold us right next to here. And I think once we're 20%, we can do the Queen of Thieves quest. And then I can get an extra 10% as a reward from that quest so I can dig up buckets of sand to the northeast there. This is taking forever. This is one crane. I haven't even repaired it yet. So I'm doing Queen of Thieves now to get the extra favor from the quest and move on to an easier task for favor. Why am I doing all this? Well, one main reason. I'm tired of the graceful I'm wearing. I know it's gold. I'm supposed to be loving gold and wearing gold all the time, but I need to change my graceful yet again for the third time. I know I'm wasting marks of grace. I just have some weird habit and I need to change it. Also, I've never had white graceful and we almost have 100% favor in every single house. So why the hell not do it? Why not go for it? All right, here we are completing Queen of Thieves. This is going to get us 41 thieving, yep, and it's going to give us the favor in order to dig up those worms or whatever the hell they are in the northeast corner of Piscalarius and get much quicker favor to hit 100% favor eventually. So here we are now participating in the pinnacle of RuneScape content, and that is digging out of the ground for worms. All right, that got much quicker favor. I'm now 100% Piscalarius favor, and we just have to complete Shazian if we do want that white graceful, which I probably will do in just a little bit. But first, I went to thieve some hand members for some easy clues. I just wanted to see the rates on easy clues versus medium clues when it comes to purple sweets, because catching eclectics is not that hard, and they give a little bit more purple sweets per medium clue, but I can't complete as many medium clues as I can easy clue steps because of the weapon requirements and because of some restricted areas. But I did not take into account the fact that some of these easy clue steps I do not have the worn equipment for and some of it's still hard to get like this blue wizard rope top I've been stabbing these mages for for 38 minutes. And no, I don't believe I can get this rope top in any other way. I've looked it up, you can't buy it out of a store or anything. So I'm just literally camping these wizards hoping they'll drop it. I believe it's not that rare of a rate but I still have yet to somehow get this thing. I've literally ran out of food. We've been here an hour and a half. I need to go bank at Draenor Village for more food. I don't know how I have not yet gotten this drop yet. I've gotten two blue wizard hats. Look at my inventory. I can't make this up. The wizard hats are a one in 42 drop and the robe top is a one in 18. And I've gotten two of these hats and no robe top. It's actually insane. I literally just got another wizard hat. How? It's literally three times the drop rate and I've gotten three of these things with no robe top. I just got a water talisman. That's a one in 42. A robe top is a one in 18. Oh, and some bones. Yeah, I'm out of here. Day two of killing wizards for a one in 18 drop. It doesn't help that I can only hit ones and I have to wait till I poison these things. But yeah, please give me a robe top, please. There it is. Total time, I think killing wizards for a one in 18 drop around three hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> There's the robe top. I did not expect easy clues to take this long. My life is so hard as a defense peer. I'm happy to kick cows because their mood timer makes them immune to poison and it's taken quite a while just to kick this stupid cow. 
but we're getting there. I need it for the leather to make the leather cowl. Okay, I bought a scimitar out of the owl carrot shop. We've got all the items for this clue step. Finally, after like four hours for a singular easy clue step, we have it. I'm just trying to get 10 caskets, get a little taste of what it's gonna be like if I open these on Entrana. Maybe see how many purple sweets we get out of those 10 caskets and see if they're really truly any better than medium caskets. I mean, this is not gonna be a precise thing, but nine more to go and we'll get a taste of what's to come. Okay, so I did not know this, but apparently there's even some worn steps on easy clues I can't do. So medium clues already are looking uh, maybe a little bit better. Once again, there are perks to running around the entire world map with almost no teleports. You get to find these rare implants and get some passive income along the way. I was thinking even way down the road, getting 99 thieving so I never get kicked out or caught by the hand members and therefore I don't get kicked out of the camp and have to run all the way back down. I can just endlessly pickpocket as fast as possible with that thieving cape perk. That might be a better purple sweet rate than catching eclectics for mediums and getting the smaller perk of more purple sweets and more rolls on the medium clue scrolls. But I don't know. But that's way into the future once again and just a lot of goals I'm projecting here. Okay the whole process here I would say took around eight hours to get the 10 clues to do them but I mean, there was like a four hour detour. So you could say in reality, the 10 clues took me about three to four hours to get. So I'm opening these caskets on Entrana because there's extra rolls for any armor or equipment that you can actually wield on the island whenever you open the caskets there. That means instead of getting like a black sword or a piece of black equipment, it's gonna re-roll on the casket out of the three or four rolls I believe these caskets have. And then it's gonna roll into possibly a purple sweet, some ruins or some food. All right, so moment of truth, I'll be opening all 10 of these on the island and we're gonna see how many purple sweets we get out of this. All right, teleports. I forgot you can get teleports still from easies. Some more runes. A fire lighter. I forgot about those pages, of course, you can get on the island. I did get four purple sweets there. More runes, coins. Coins, runes, pages, runes. Food runes. Forgot about food. Master clue scroll. Forgot about those. Now, that might actually be handy to do some sort of juggling for master clue scrolls. But yeah, it looks like we only got one purple sweet drop. I mean, this could be a very odd case, but, uh... That was terrible. For eight hours of work, we got four purple sweets. Let's go see though if we can actually do this master clue for once. Okay, so I think I can do this once I get 90 woodcutting and fire making, if I ever do, but it's the best master clue step I've gotten yet. So I think I'm gonna keep this one. I realized I could log into Rune Light and track my loot. Yeah, I never used this plugin before, but check this out. 602 hand members it took to get those 10 easy clues. All right, after my long hiatus of like two months and fucking around doing easy clues and everything else because I didn't want to have to do medium clues again. Here we are again, and for some reason, the graphics are bugged the fuck out, at least on my client. This is not bug abuse. Please don't ban me for this one. All right, I've got another haul of eclectics and rare implants I'm gonna open here. This is great passive income and looks like hard clues possibly. I don't know if I can do that one. It doesn't say exactly where that is. I, I can't access fairy rings, but I believe I can go to that fairy ring maybe and dig near it. So yeah, high doubt I can actually do that hard clue entirely, but I'll check it out in a bit. Like I said, there's just a lot of passive income and hard clues aren't really that important to me. There's nothing good I can get out of a hard clue. Now elite clue is a different story. That's where the kilt comes into play, but I'm not taking hard clues that seriously. So I'm not gonna be that disappointed if I can't even do that one. Okay, so the first step of the hard clue was next to mud skipper point. So I could access that. I did not need fairy rings to actually get there. And it did let me dig there. And I got this next step with the examiner at dig site, which is a puzzle step, which I could do as well, surprisingly. So that's two steps completed somehow. And ooh, this doesn't look good. I don't have this music track unlocked. It's unlocked at the death altar. I, I cannot do that. Yeah, you have to you have to do mornings in part two to get to the death altar. And I can't do that quest line because I have to do underground pass, which requires 20 range. It's not boostable. And the quest itself gives attack XP and I can't take attack XP. Obviously I'm one attack here. I still haven't done any gangsters yet because I realized the XP, at least in traditional means, is going to be completely shit on this account unless I find some new method, which I might do in the future. But we did just get 100% Shay-Z in favor, as you can see, and that means I can get my white graceful. Here we go. For the third time, we're changing our graceful color just because why the hell not? I'm bored of the one I'm wearing, and I wear it a lot. So here's full white graceful. I've never had this before on any account. That looks pretty damn cool. So I thought of another way rather than using Artie Cloak, I was thinking maybe I could just use my game's necklaces and take this shortcut into the Gnome Stronghold, but unfortunately it does not let me. I found out you actually have to complete the Grand Shree quest to use this shortcut. We are so close to completing that quest, but we cannot complete it because it gives attack XP. More alcohols. More alcohols. More alcohols. 
Hold on, hold on, wait, that's not an alcohol, that's a unicorn mask. That shit is mega rare, bro. That's twice as rare as the manacles that I still have not yet gotten, but it matches my outfit. This is destiny. More alcohols, more alcohols, more alcohols, more not alcohols, more not alcohols. For the first time in my life, I'm not going to use this lamp on Herblore. I've realized eventually I'm gonna have to get 60 Slayer. I've got a lot of wild pies so I can boost to 65, but I just got 17. By the way, check this out. Skill level ups are still stackable interfaces. As soon as I get out of the bank, you'll know exactly what I mean. Jagex, you might want to fix that. Look at that. 17 Slayer after using the bank? No way. More teleports. Okay, so the Morton teleport and the Shades of Morton minigame teleport I unlocked a few episodes back is not always the best option to get to the more Tanya steps of these medium clues. It just depends on where the step's at. If it's more west, this typically tends to be better. If I use a dig site or a lumberyard teleport as I'm doing right now, and then run east through the agility obstacle that requires 70 agility, then run a little bit north, I'm already going to be at the Slayer Tower and therefore I can get to that more Tanya step a bit quicker than running through the underground pass area I unlocked as well just a few episodes back. All right, that's how I typically get to the Slayer Tower. And of course our loot is more alcohols, more not alcohols. All right, this better be the big bucks, baby. Give me the manacles, 10 purple sweets, I'll take that. Holy mother of God. That is the absolute worst loot I've ever gotten from a medium clue. Just a reminder, these are taking me forever, but we got six purple sweets, thank God. Please have pity on my poor defense pure soul. Give me the boots. More alcohols. 100 medium clues though. God. Damn, my sweet RNG is incredible. Oh, I thought that was 10 purple sweets, but it's 10 purple firelighters. I don't know how I've done over 100 medium clues. I've dropped like another 300 on the floor and I've never gotten this equipment clue step. It wants me to wield green robe top, myth plate legs, iron 2H sword. So I'm going to Louis legs. I got a friend also named Louis legs, by the way, just a fun fact about myself, but I'm going to the NPC Louis legs to pull out those mithril plate legs that I need for this clue step. As well, I'm gonna have to go to Taverly for the 2H, and then I'm gonna have to go all the way to the stupid Gnome Stronghold out in the middle of goddamn nowhere for that rope top. Now, unlike the Slayer Tower step navigation I used earlier, we're gonna be going through the Underground Pass I unlocked a few episodes back in order to get a little bit quicker access to the middle of Canifest to do this clue I have yet to ever do in my entire life. Talking about impossible achievements, something that's never been done in the game of RuneScape is a man dancing with a green rope top, iron 2H, myth plate legs in the middle of Canifus with only one prayer. I'm the first of its kind, baby. And now we're moving on to finish this clue out. Sorry, I turned on my HD mode because my fiance was looking over my shoulder. I showed her that the game now has updated graphics with certain plugins and she really enjoyed that. But another piece of trash loot out of this clue. More alcohols. I'm telling you all, if you have a friend that's never played this game, put on HD and show it to them then. They might actually want to play it for once rather than looking at the shitty graphics because for some reason, some people have a problem with graphics in 2022. <coughs> Emily. All right, some more rare implings from another like 700 and something eclectic haul here. Let's see what we can get. I'm going to guess what it's going to be. Think think about it. What are we going to get from these rare implings? More alcohols. All right, another haul of 798 eclectic implings. It's dwindling. Eventually, we're going to have to catch more shit tier amps and trade them in for jars. I think once I hit around 500 implings, I'm going to start doing that again. I'm going to ask this again. If anyone has any idea how to get to Relica faster than wasting my Blast Furnace minigame teleporter, running through the entire city of Keldrigram, taking a boat, then exiting through a cave, let me know in the comments below because I am stumped here and I am, I am begging for your help. Wait, I have an idea. Hold on, wait a second. Slayer rings, but I can't really do those till 40 combat. That's probably, I guarantee you, someone's already commented that below from the earlier moment in time I said something because there's a Relica Slayer dungeon with a teleport next to it. All right, so I've got more crystal keys. I think I have three of them now I can put together. I'm gonna try and get this Addy Square Shield. It's a one in 64 chance once again. We have three rolls here. Let's see if we can get it. Let's see if we can do this clue step finally. One dragon stone. One dragon stone and more gems that are useless. And another spinach roll, my favorite. I love spinach rolls, holy shit. You know what they say, opening clues in front of fireplaces is bad luck. I'll take it. Felda pill teleports, I actually need those. Let's see. Holy shit, is that even possible? Can you pull 11K cash out of a medium clue? I guess so. Here we go, I just used those felled up hill teleports to get here. A master clue scroll book, another one. Interesting, I'm not sure what I can do with that. There's some more purple sweets there as well, not a bad loot. 
One prayer priest and peril man opens clue casket in Mortania and gets junk. More alcohols. More teleports. I somehow have never gotten a clue step here, much less a casket, but what the fuck? We got <sighs> another gold elegant piece. Once again, a higher rarity than manacles but it'll match the pissed yellow bottoms I got earlier. But you know what's crazy, think about this. I now have a full gold suit, not only in real life, but in the game. So I was gonna say more alcables, but does that even really count? We are back in the spot, so now it's the second time in the world someone with one prayer has opened this clue casket here. Wow. More alcables. Let's see, give it to me, what do you got here for me? Two uniques and another piece of elegant that's super rare. Interesting. More alcables. Okay, so you know how I said earlier when I got Chaos Ruins and GP that that was like the worst loot I've ever gotten from a medium clue? I stand corrected. Look at the value of this clue. That is utterly insane. This looks like an easy or even a beginner clue reward at that. Okay, once again, a step I somehow have not gotten till now. I've done like 125 medium clues. I've dropped like another 300, 400 on the ground and we've just now gotten this. So I've got to go start tourist trap and kill the guy out front inside of the gate to get the key. I just need to start the quest. I don't need to complete it. Okay, so here I go. I've got to piss this guy off to fight him. I'm actually not going to use any alts for this. I, I could to make it a lot easier on myself, but I really just have to stab him a few times, get him poisoned because he's not immune to poison. Unlike the other impossible quest NPCs I've been fighting in previous episodes, this guy should be relatively easy once I can finally get the poison off on him. Okay, so this quest boss was super easy once again because he's not immune to poison. I am dying to desert heat out here, but he should be dead here soon and I can eat these lobsters to make sure I don't die as I still have quite a few of them. One more poison tick and I should be able to get the gate key and go inside this area where that clue step is. All right, we've gotten it. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my armor because if I actually run in there with any piece of armor on, they'll kick me out and sometimes they'll even steal the key, meaning I have to kill this guy again. So I really don't wanna waste another three or four minutes. All right, here it is. And who knows, maybe one day I'll hopefully actually complete the tourist trap. It's a pretty easy quest. I'm just lazy right now. Here's another Mortania clue step that I used, the Shades of Morton minigame teleport and then that underground passage area from In Search of Myrku in order to get to. It's still a long trek, but it's much quicker than any other option. Once again, once I get 40 combat, I will work on Slayer Rings eventually way down the road. That's still hundreds of hours away of game time, so it won't be anytime soon, but I could do Wilderness Slayer. It's just not worth the risk of my account being so low level as well. It's gonna be really tedious and I'm gonna have to use a lot of alts. I'd rather just chill with Vanica Task once I can actually get them. So another mystery box. We're not as lucky as last time. 500 coins, no stale baguette, unfortunately. More alcohols. Once again, another crazy stack of GP from a reward here. I did not know that was possible for these medium clues at all. More alcohols. Okay, that's like the best thing I can get. I got purple sweets and I got Tyboiano teleports. Everyone knows those are my favorite. I don't know how many times I have to mention them, but God bless this clue skull reward. Even though it's not manacles, it's like second best. I'm running around the entire map of Gilinor to do these fucking clues. I'm a masochistic psycho, and nobody should have to do this ever in their entire fucking lives. Keep that in mind. Oh wow, I forgot about the trench coat. That's cool, I could always wear that. More alcohols. Sweets and me have some kind of weird correlation, and it's a positive one. Alright, this is my last casket from the Eclectic Dump and nothing special unfortunately 142 medium clues though completed now that is a lot of medium clues especially on this account once again it takes forever to do these okay right now i'm making food for winter tot why the hell am i doing winter tot i've never done winter tot in my life by the way this is probably a shit tier food there's probably better options but i'm buying cakes and chocolate bars putting them together to make chocolate cakes why not i decided this guy has both of them so we're just gonna do that but why winter tot why am i doing fire making right now well, I decided I'm going to take a small break from clues to get some fire making up because I recently saw in a dev blog they're coming out with something soon called Poison Dynamite. It's not even being pulled, but it's basically an XP-less way to get some hits off on NPCs. Since they patched spawn hitting so long ago, they're finally kind of making a correction to that, but it's going to add a lot more possibilities along the way, and it's going to roll off your fire making level apparently. So I'm getting high fire making level, so some of the higher level NPCs I'll be fighting in the future, I'm going to be able to roll higher against those NPCs and possibly hit them. The Poison Dynamite is not stackable so it'll consume in your inventory it won't make the fight cave any easier because of this but there are some things i can get done on this account that will be easier that i'll mention in the future that'll definitely benefit from poison dynamite and that's why i've decided to at least get my fire making up to around 80 possibly even 99 eventually we'll see how much i get burnt out of it no pun intended 
until I actually want to hop back over to medium clues. So I found another baker here to make my chocolate cakes. This one's a little bit closer to the bank, so he's a little bit better, just a little bit. We're almost ready for winter time. I've never done this in my life. I'm literally gonna go watch a theoatrics guide on how to do this right after I make these cakes. What's All right, here we are. I think guy. I've got this whole process down. I'm not gonna be fletching the logs. I'm just here for XP mainly, and I'm wielding four worn pieces of clothing. Of course, I had to wield my D-Med as well for the fashionscape to show it off to all these people who likely have Entity Hider on and can't even see me anyways. We're getting fire making up extremely quick here. This mini game is to be honest, a little bit overpowered, but fire making is such a shit skill anyways, like who wants to actually burn logs? I don't blame them for putting this in the game. I'm already in the 70 stats for fire making. I've done 54 crates and I just got a pyromancer robe top already. So I don't even know if I'm gonna wear this to be honest because that looks pretty ugly, but it does give a boost to fire making XP. So I might have to. Only two more games over, number 56. I've gotten a broom of torch here, which is super handy. I no longer need a tinder box to light everything. So I don't think I'm going to actually be getting spooned on these boots. I've already done over 124 medium clues with nothing really to show for it besides some purple sweets. But luckily today, this quest, Temple of the Eye came out and it has a mini game afterwards that gives a good reward possibly for my account and that is the Ring of Elements. Now, from what people have already told me, it's really hard to get this thing. It takes forever to get the pearls to get this thing. So I might be spending hours and hours and hours at this new mini game, and I typically hate runecrafting in the past, but this might be different. Maybe this is gonna be fun, who knows? I don't know, but I need that ring pretty badly, and it's gonna give me a lot of teleport access to these elemental altars, a new way to get to Faldor much easily through the air altar, a new way to get the balloons through the earth altar, a new way to get to Alcarid steps through the fire altar, and so much more. It's really a necessity, so I'm gonna do this quest, and then probably spend several hours at the minigame afterwards to get that ring. So I started this quest with only like 14 runecrafting, bare ass minimum requirements. I'm already 20 runecrafting just from getting XP inside of the actual quest itself which is kind of like a tutorial for the minigame, which I haven't read anything about. I'm kind of just skipping through the dialogue, unfortunately, but as you can see, yeah, there's XP just like loading on me throughout this quest. So I'm really intrigued as to see, along with the 5,000 XP reward this quest supposedly gives, what my runecrafting level is gonna be at the end of this entire process, because for low level runecrafting on this account, just doing this quest alone, much less the minigame afterwards, seems to be amazing. All right, so let's see, this should be quest end. I got 22 inside the quest, as you can see. Let's see what I got after the quest. 28 rune crafting from that quest from like 14. That is insane. All right, so this mini game so far is kind of fun. I'm getting my bearings with it. There's no guides out right now. This just came out. I haven't got any pearls or rewards yet, but we'll see how good it is. I have a feeling this is gonna take a long time based on what some other people have already told me. But yeah, we're kind of at a stopping point. I wanna go ahead and do more of this mini game content in the next episode, and we've stopped our clues for quite a while, so I'm gonna go for this ring. I'm gonna try and get the ring. I'm gonna try and finish my medium clue grind, no matter how long it takes, whether it takes me 200, 300, 400, 4,000, 5,000 medium clues to get my spiked manacles. I'm not going to try and put out a next episode till I have that best in slot boot, which is a plus four strength bonus, which is something I absolutely need once again for the fight caves. If you guys are enjoying these episodes and this series, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell notification, all of that good stuff. I'll see you guys again here soon. Thanks for everything, guys. Catch you then.